Wisconsin Eye's 2014 election coverage is brought to you by the Wisconsin Hospital Association. For over 90 years, a valued voice for Wisconsin hospitals, supporting high quality, high value care in communities like yours. Wisconsin I continues its coverage of the 2014 elections. We're interviewing Michelle Zahn of Juno. She's a Democrat running in Senate District 13. Michelle, welcome to Wisconsin I. Thank you. And programming note, Wisconsin I appreciates the support of the Wisconsin Hospital Association, which represents more than 139 hospitals and health systems for making these candidate interviews possible. Michelle, you're, this is um, your first time in Wisconsin I, so we have a tradition. Could you give us a, a, your background, please? And I'm fascinated by what you say on your website, I'm way out of my comfort zone running for public office. So tell us about yourself. Uh, I was born and raised in Milwaukee. I came to Dodge County, Wisconsin when I met my husband Jim Zahn on a blind date in 1972. We were married in 1973 and we'll celebrate our 41st anniversary, the 1st of September. We have three children, six grandchildren. We are retired dairy farmers. I own and operate a national mail order business known as the Soap Lady, now in its 37th year. Um, I raise sheep for their wool and I shear them myself and then spin and weave beautiful things. Um, so I've been a person for 37 years. Congratulations. 37 years. Well, it's intriguing because you say, I feel compelled to run out of a sense of fairness. Can you elaborate on that a bit? I've been watching things the way they're going on in, the, in politics. <coughs> and to be honest, uh, Scott Fitzgerald is my neighbor. I've known him for a very long time. In 1994, when he first ran against Barbara Lorman, I voted for her because I like her. But in 98, and again in 2002, I voted for Scott because I said he's my neighbor, I know him, and I trusted him to re represent us. But I haven't voted for him since because what I see is that he's representing special interests and not us. I feel that he is no longer representing us. Let's talk about some of the issues on your website. Let's start with public schools. You want to restore state funding to our public schools. Could you elaborate on that? Do you f obviously feel they've been getting short shrift in the last few budget cycles? I do. I feel um, very strongly that the voucher system is not a good one. It amounts to um, our tax dollars supporting two separate public school systems and the big difference between the two of them is that the public school system is required to take all students so they take students with disabilities students that have uh, behavior problems but the voucher school systems do not um, the public school systems are required to meet certain standards the vouchers school systems are not and I don't think it is right that taxpayers support a school system that isn't held up to the same standards that the public school system if is. If you were in the Senate in terms of the future of vouchers or the choice program what would you push for? Would you totally shut it down or would you keep it going in those two large cities in southeast Wisconsin, Milwaukee and Racine? I think this goes back to the uh, local control thing, the local control issue. Um, if a public school system doesn't want to have its tax dollars go to the voucher system, then I think that it should be up to the public school system of that particular municipality. Okay. Mm -hmm. On uh, another uh, K-12 issue, the governor recently called for the repeal of the Common Core Standards. Do you have a position on that, ma'am? I do. Common Core Standards is not about curriculum. It's about standards, just standards, not telling teachers how to teach anything. And the reason that it came up is because we are a very mobile society. Students and families move from one community to another or from one state to another. And if we have common standards, then a third grader who moves from the state of Mississippi to the state of Wisconsin will be able to pick up where they left off. That's what the Common Core is all about, and because of that, I support it. So they, they should stay in place? Is I your position. think so, yes. Question on health care. Uh, Medicaid in Wisconsin now provides health care for one in five Wisconsin residents. 
yet the American Hospital Association says Wisconsin has the second lowest Medicaid reimbursement rate in the nation. Do you have a position on whether those reimbursement rates should be increased in the next state budget? I don't know a whole lot about this, okay. but I'll tell you, if Wisconsin is the lowest Second, as second lowest, according to American Hospital. As a senator, I would question why, okay. and then I would want to know what to do about it. Do you have a position on the uh, uh, Affordable Care Act, whether it's a good thing? I do. My husband is a cancer survivor. We are self-employed people. Without the Affordable Care Act, we weren't eligible to get any insurance of any kind. Now we can. The Affordable Care Act is a good thing. It has a lot of bugs. I think we need to work them out, but we certainly don't need to repeal it. Thank you. Question on transportation funding. The Wisconsin Taxpayers Alliance has said, if transportation spending were frozen at the 2013 level, over the next two years, we'd be $2 billion short. That's what the Taxpayers Alliance said. Do you think we have a deficit? And if we do, how should it be fixed? We do have a deficit. We have a deficit in all kinds of things. I can't tell you how to fix it, but I can tell you how it's not going to be fixed. We have a law in place, thanks to our Republican um, government here in the state of Wisconsin, that is going to render all manufacturers and agriculture, large agricultural industries, um, completely income tax free by 2016. That's not how you fix things. Everybody needs to pay th their fair share in tax. Okay. Um, are, you, uh, are you against either raising the gas tax or what you and I pay to register our vehicles to make up the deficit in transportation funding? Do you have a position on that? I'm not against raising taxes when it makes sense. I am against lowering taxes and making uh, larger taxpayers um, less responsible. Okay. Um, there are some worry that we may have a deficit in the next state budget, the 2015-2017 cycle, because of the recent tax cuts. You know, the, there's been three tax cuts passed in the last 18 months. If there is a deficit, do you have a position on how to fix it? Should we cut spending, or do you see a way to raise more revenue? It all goes back to laws like the one I just uh, mentioned, mm -hmm. making uh, manufacturers and agricultural industries um, tax exempt is not a good idea. Making corporations tax exempt or wooing businesses from other states with promises of, of tax exemptions is not the solution to the problem. I think all the states across the nation need to agree that wooing uh, companies from one state to another uh, promising tax exemptions is not a solution. Um, it's a growing issue. We've seen it in Colorado and uh, either Oregon or the state of Washington, the issue of medical marijuana and recreational use of marijuana. Do you have a position on those questions? I do. I think that the uh, most dangerous thing about marijuana is that it's illegal. I think that um, if we legalize marijuana, even recreational use, there are all kinds of good things that could happen. Um, people would stop dying in, uh, in an attempt to get it. People wouldn't be shot. Uh, the hard drug dealers would no longer be the place where you go to get marijuana, which is the only way that I see marijuana amounts as a gateway to stronger drugs. If you didn't have to go to a drug dealer to get it, it wouldn't be a gateway. So you would support then both medical and rec recreational use? Yes, okay. it is. It is, uh, um, it is a source of tax for the uh, state. Question and on the state of excuse me. Colorado yes. can tell you that. Yep. Question on the environment. Uh, one of the first laws passed, it was either 2012 or 2013, um, gave Gogebe Taconite the right to apply for a mining permit in Ashland and Iron Counties. Are you familiar with that issue? Do you think that law should be changed? I think that whenever we pass laws like that, we have to give the public, particularly those who are going to be directly connected, more opportunity to have input. Okay. Um, drunken driving, first offense, should it be a crime, Michelle? I don't think so. I have a personal experience in that. My son was hit by a drunk driver when he was living in Austin, Texas, some years ago, 1998, 1999 and um, his leg was severed. He was on a motorcycle. 
In Texas, the law is that a first-time offense is a mandatory jail, one, one year in jail. Mm -hmm. Because of that, all the people who witnessed the accident, who had any alcohol on their breath, left the scene. There were no witnesses. There was no one there. The driver was never caught. I think making something illegal doesn't stop it from happening. It causes unexpected results. So if you make something against the law, it won't stop it from happening. It'll just make everybody who is there that had a little alcohol in their breath leave. And that's not a good thing. Thank you. Um, you list on your website one of your top goals is creating jobs and saying the answer to creating jobs is supporting small business. Can you elaborate uh, changes in state law that you'd push for as a state senator to help small businesses? I don't know about state law, but I do have a personal experience there as well. In 1995, my business, The Soap Lady, was featured on the cover of the Country Woman magazine. Mm -hmm. And as a result, I got national recognition. The first thing that our county board, which is primarily very conservative, did, they sent me a letter telling me that I had to cease and desist my business because I was living on a farm which was zoned agriculture use only. So I first had to prove to them that I had been in business since before we were zoned, which was easy. I had newspaper articles to, to do that. But then I had to get a conditional use permit. And the conditions of my permit are that I can never hire anyone and I can't put out any signs advertising my business. So I'm proposing that encouraging entrepreneurs, helping them to grow their business is the way to get more jobs here, not discouraging them and um, binding them the way I was. Um, I want to ask you about some other uh, issues that are important to you because you're on your website. Getting big money out of politics. You'd like to see a constitutional amendment. This would be to overturn Citizens United? Yes. That's a federal issue, but you would, you would push for that as a state senator? Yes. Why, why do you think that's so important? Because the Citizens United Amendment has declared that corporations are people and money is speech. And I think what we're seeing in politics now, just in the past 10 years, can tell you that that's not true. We have representatives, my opponent included, who are now beholden to people who have given them more money than their constituents. That's not the way our government is supposed to work. Then one other item that's on your website, um, actually two, uh, restore every worker's right to join together to bargain. Would you completely overturn Act 10, which your opponent, Senator Fitzgerald, uh, helped get through the Senate, ma'am? I don't know. I don't know everything that is in there. I'm sure there was something good, so I'd probably not advocate for the complete overturning. But taking away a worker's right to collective bargaining is not good. It's not good for them and it's not good for their employers because employees who feel, um, employees who have a place at the table to discuss take a general interest in the success of that business and are better employees. So you believe public employees should uh, again have the ability to collectively bargain? I do and I believe all employees should have the ability to collectively bargain. And then uh, just one more issue on your website, protecting everyone's right to vote. Is that a reference to the photo ID law? It Michelle? is. You would have voted against it? Definitely. The voter ID law isn't going to prevent fraud. My, I have three grown children and I can tell you that each one of them had a fake ID. Uh, an ID, in my opinion, amounts to a poll tax and that's just wrong. Okay. Um, we've talked about some issues in which you differ from your opponent, Senator Fitzgerald. Is, is there any uh, other issue that you want to add? I think the basic difference between me and my opponent is that I firmly believe that I stand to learn much more when I discuss things with people with whom I disagree. My opponent has suspended committee meetings within the Senate because he says that the Republican Party has the majority, therefore everything can go their way. And I think that's a mistake, because if you don't discuss things with people with whom you disagree, you can't anticipate unforeseen uh, consequences of an action. Thank you. Uh, 
<coughs> excuse me, M uh, Michelle Zahn of Juno is a Democratic candidate in Senate District 13. Excuse me, Michelle, for mangling your name. Thank you very much for coming to talk to Wisconsin Eye. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you.